Hey, what's up, everybody? DJ Sixsmith here. You're watching the sit down. Andy Wilson here with us. Got a lot going on these days, man. What's going on? Well, most importantly, I'm making cartoons. Mm. Yeah, and that's also, the most important out of everything in the world right now. Cartoons are being made. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm quarantining. Uh, I'm trying to survive this weird post-apocalyptic reality that we have. But far more important than that, I'm putting cartoons into the world. And that's making me pretty happy. <laughs> Well, we certainly need that levity. So how about Hello Ninja? I mean, it's gone from your mind to a book to the Netflix world. Like, what's been the craziest part of this whole ride for you? You know, I think the, well, it's, it's hard to locate like an individual crazy part because I've written big fat books. I've written a lot of novels. I've spent the last decade writing long novels, seeing them go around the world you know, all those things. It's having it be pretty successful, really enjoying it. And then my three-year-old, she's now 10. Uh, my my three-year-old asked me for a book for her. Mm. Uh, I had I had sold a picture book uh, into New York, into the New York publishing world years prior and was still waiting for it to actually get printed. So I decided, you know what, Let's, I'm just going to self-publish something real quick. So she can have it while she's three, you know, so I don't write her something and then she gets it while she's eight. So we really sat down that night. We worked on Hello Ninja. I, I ran lines off of her to see what was super sticky, like what really caught her attention. And then we self-published it as a little board book. Uh, I, I didn't have many expectations for it at all, other than this is for my daughter and she's happy. And, uh, you know, it got picked by Starbucks as a pick of the week, and they gave it. They gave the iBook away nationwide, and that really just kind of launched that sucker. So we we started sending physical inventory into targets, and it started really, really motoring. So we sold the property to Netflix for a show, and the backstory there was that I I didn't want to have to make it. Mm -hmm. I didn't really believe in it. Uh, my manager named Grace Letty. She was just, she was the believer where she was like, yeah, this can go, this can go. And I'd seen so many big projects in Hollywood just kind of evaporate. Mm -hmm. And I thought, really, my, bo my board book is going <laughs> to, like, I have, I have serious producers, really big producers on some of my novels. Mm -hmm. I'm watching how difficult that was. Um, so the idea that one of them, like, you know, my board book would just go, my self-published board book was, was kind of farcical. So I told her, yeah, do whatever you want. You know, like try to set it up. That's great. But just don't make me do anything. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I kept writing my novels. And then, you know, we went down to L.A. I, li I live in Idaho. And we, my, my production partner and I flew down to, Ida uh, down to L.A. from Idaho for some other meetings. And a pitch was going on. I've been set with Netflix. And, you know, so we, we went to the pitch. And as the author of the book, I ended up pitching a vision that was, I wasn't expecting to pitch. Yeah, you know, I, was, I wasn't expecting, I, was, I was, really didn't have to think about it, I was just there. And they asked me like what the vision for the book was and for the property. Uh, and I, I told them it was Calvin and Hobbes with none of the cynicism. I wanted this, <laughs> I wanted like big color Sunday panel, wish fulfillment, you know, dreams coming true, kind of a thing for little kids, but without that cynical downbeat that makes Calvin so funny to adults. So I was going to remove that jaded downbeat. Right. And I, they, they loved the idea. Uh, so I real quick went into brain surgery. That was a nice little mm. hiatus. Uh, I didn't tell them that was happening because nobody wants to know about that. No, you but, leave that uh, for the next meeting. You just save that for a second yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. So. I come out of brain surgery and Grace Letting, my manager, says, so they really want it, but they'd love to see a script. So I real quick wrote a script, sent it over. You know, I was Wait, still, how, I how long is this post brain, brain surgery? How long after? Not, not very. Wow. I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty close. I want to say two weeks. Oh my gosh. Uh, but I, I spent the first week learning to walk, uh, like to walk again. Oh my gosh. And then, the next week, I was like, okay, it's time to write a preschool, you know, try to, I'd never done that before. I was a novelist. I'd written screenplays, but mm -hmm. like preschool stuff. So I, I kicked something out. I, I don't want to look at it again because I don't know, like, I've got no real desire to revisit that script. 
but it uh, it closed the deal. It closed the deal for me, and we got a great a great order from them and got to work. And I've been working on it ever since. So I've done a heck of a lot. My initial deal was, don't make me do anything, Grace. And that, that turned into, I'm at the pitch meetings, I'm mm-hmm. writing this pilot You're literally scripts. doing everything. I'm in, the, I'm in the room, I'm in all the writer's rooms. I was, yeah, it was, it turned into a full-on roller coaster that I loved being on, it was a blast. And the show has really rung the bell that I was aiming at from the very, very beginning, you know? And my now 10-year-old loves it. I mean, my, I have a bunch of kids, and my teenagers love it. They all, they all love to get together and just laugh at the execution, the whimsy of these two, you know, these two pals uh, and their cat, you know, Georgie and Wesley and Pretzel. And then also the uh, really the big, the big, big wish fulfillment and the animation execution and the directing was executed at such a high level, a much higher level than I was uh, even optimistic for. So I was really wanting us to aim high. Mike Dowding did an amazing job directing. And it's just a blast to watch. It's so dynamic and funny and, you know, Looney Tunes slapstick meets Calvin and Hobbes mm. meets ninjas. I mean, it, it makes me smile every single time I'm watching an episode, even if I've seen it 35 times. <laughs> that is an unbelievable story. I mean, every single part of that one. So I, I totally understand that you're saying there, there isn't just one crazy part. So when you think about the fact that people all over the world are now seeing the show. It all started from you right. basically just want to be a cool dad. Like you just want to impress your daughter. <laughs> yeah, I'm a much cooler dad now. Um, <laughs> thank, thanks, thanks to Netflix. Mm. So it's, it's really weird to know that you're hitting 190 countries, mm. you know, day one. And that's just the, the way the industry's changed and the, the reach that Netflix has is so phenomenal. And such a privilege to be even you know on to have access to that kind of platform is amazing um it's phenomenal and i think my my favorite part about it i really believe is the birthday parties Mm -hmm. you know so the birthday parties when i see birthday parties around the world where it's ninja cakes it's hello ninja it's wesley and georgie and pretzel and you know it thrills me because this is you know brazil or turkey or you know wherever it might be and everywhere you go kids want their best friends at their birthdays. You know, they want their, they want their pals at their birthday party. And so to see like these little ninjas, uh, these little characters that got first uh, built at my dining room table with my three year old, like attending birthday parties worldwide, just, you know, makes me really happy. That's really insane. And it's just funny too, cause you spent so much time on these really important serious works of art that you've done in the past and the <laughs> novels, right? And it's this throwaway thing. But it also goes to show that, like, you had that creativity in your mind. Like, yeah, it was random one night and all that. But, like, were you conscious of the fact that, like, you had this world kind of brewing in there as you got going with all this stuff? Yeah, I think there's there's ways in which I was absolutely conscious. So I was, uh, you broke up there for a second. But I I think I got the important part of the question. I was I was very conscious of the world, mm-hmm. like the, I wanted to write with you know little ninjas, especially uh, this little ninja with this giant round head and a pot belly. You know, it's like I I really love that, like kids playing ninja. But uh, I think it goes to show, like when you create, and this this sounds super corny, but when you create authentically, or when you mm-hmm. create for a, a really authentic audience, when you have a very particular audience in mind, and you're looking to touch them. Like when you're looking to touch like the most human part of any one audience, that can scale. Like that can, you know, that can just expand and go exponential. So you have, I had a three-year-old mm-hmm. and I was authentically trying to touch that three-year-old in like in her heart. Like I was mm-hmm. really trying to like give her joy. And if I could give her joy, like, well, the world is full of little kids everywhere. So if you, if you have a particular audience in mind, and you're, and you're going after them with a real authenticity, with a sincerity that you're, you're really trying to give joy, uh, that scales. I mean, that really, that, that really does scale. So whether it's a throwaway, whether it took you one evening or whether it takes years, like if that's, you know, if that's how you approach it, I think it can always potentially go, you know, go big, way beyond your, just your own kids. How long does an average book typically take for you? 
you know, that varies a lot. The, the first novel I wrote, uh, I wrote in about three and a half weeks because it just grabbed me mm -hmm. and I went. But I've had novels take me, you know, a couple of years. You know, like that's a year and a half, two years. Pretty normal for me. A draft, like a first draft is three months to six months. And then I'll, I'll circle back. The second draft takes a little less time. You know, if I would do a third, that might just be a, a, a one month. But it's, it piles up, right? So it's, the novel work is way more similar to the show, like in terms of how much effort and time it takes. So if I'm trying to do a novel series, a trilogy or something, it's going to take me years. It's going to be straight up years of concentrated creativity, pursuing one set of characters and one, one world, one conflict. Uh, but with Hello Ninja, it turned into the exact same thing. It was, you know, a couple of years of reading scripts and, um, you know, giving guys support, supporting Mark Palmer, the showrunner, and being involved and choosing the director and watching the animation come to life and noting every step of the way, you know, being involved as a working producer every step of the way. It was very familiar in that regard, like just two years of intense focus and pointed in one direction. Uh, but I never thought I would be doing that much work for this little ninja, but uh, the little ninja that could for sure, if that property <laughs> wasn't, wasn't already taken. Yeah, I mean, the other crazy part of the story is like you mentioned it, producers have talked to you in the past about taking your book and optioning it into another project. Like the fact that this all connected from you to Starbucks, to Target, to Netflix, like that is such a rarity in this industry. Like how many times have people approached you about your novels and, and nothing ever came of it? Right, a lot. So <laughs> yeah. you know, I've, I've kept the lights on with option checks, mm -hmm. like the other successful author where it's like, hey, they, yeah, sure, I'll take this check. <laughs> and when and when you don't do anything you know it's like that's uh you know like i'll sell to somebody else it'll be great mm -hmm. but that was you know eight years ago that was 10 years ago when i started and then the industry changed mm -hmm. and production has increased and there's new long form opportunities and so it's it's not just hello ninja it's actually kind of changed for all my properties so you know all my all my book properties are moving and are are really growing in excite ways that really excite me so i've i've gone through i think one of my one of my books 100 cupboards has gone through from when it released in 2007 so many people like so many people approached me and pitched me i didn't option it to most of them some really big names uh we had a couple options on it that expired uh but now like it actually i think it's going to actually happen like oh wow i think we're going to be doing some big live action stuff too like, nice. that'd be fun um but we'll see. We'll put, we're putting a pin in that one. Right. But I'm super excited about it. It sure seems like it's going to happen. It feels a lot like Hello Ninja did when it, when it started to go. But I was, I was jaded in like 2000 and I don't know, by 2012, mm -hmm. I, was, I was pretty jaded. Five years of no longer thinking that producers could just make stuff, realizing that I had to become a producer myself, mm -hmm. like starting to work more on the left coast making partnerships and relationships with people that I could trust and work with. Um, and so it's really, it's, it's turned a corner, turned a long, slow corner into having a more active hand in my own properties and my own work has borne a lot of fruit, you know, just, it's borne a lot more fruit. And so I didn't sit back and watch Hello Ninja happen. Like I got to actually, even though I wanted to, even though I said that's what I was going to do. Right. Like I got all the way involved and now we've, we've got a, a couple other projects that are, uh, I'm I'm super excited about seeing come to life, animation and live action. Yeah, you're the best person to tell your story. When somebody else tries to tell that story for you in a meeting, it can get lost in translation. You are the authentic yep. person who created it, who's going to be best in a position to tell that. And this is a perfect example of that. Whereas I'm sure you had other meetings where somebody did the talking and it didn't work out necessarily. Yeah, there's been, you know, I think that's that happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. But it's um. Uh, it's really been, it's also just been awesome to go deeper and deeper into the industry and into the new world of streaming and, and to sort of peel back the potential on storytelling that now exists. I mean, with Hello Ninja, it's, it's not a preschool show from just right. a few years ago. Like, that's, it's so much more dynamic and big and expensive and reaching farther than any shows could have. So it can do that. It can spend more. Uh, it doesn't have to be located in just one set. You know, we have massive, big worlds built for it. Uh, 
I'm gonna honestly think that this this new streaming world is a massive gift to content creators. You know, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential for every every art form, every kind of storytelling here.